afternoon. My name is Mark Dolby, and today I'm going to present torsion. And this is for structural mechanics. And torsion is shearing stress and strain due to twisting. So, and what I'm going to be presenting is the shearing stress and strain due to twisting of a rod. And I'm going to start out with the general formulas that I'm going to develop later. But this is just so that you know where I'm going. I'm going to be talking about a solid rod and a hollow rod. And so this rod is attached to a wall somehow, and then there's a torque that's applied to the rod. So at any point along the rod, one side is going to be kind of shearing against the other side like this. And we want to be able to determine what the shear is, what the shearing stress is at any point from the middle of the rod all the way to the outside. And the way that we're going to do that is to develop some equations, basically using the idea of moments and also some of the relationships between forces and stress and force at a distance, the moment. And so this is the cross-section of this. It's just a little bit bigger. And this is just to represent what I'm talking about when I talk about R and when I talk about R max. And so for a solid rod, we have our torque. Whatever that is, it could be a given amount or an amount that you have to determine. But you have your torque equals some constant times pi divided by 2 times R to the fourth. And this R is right here. And it's the distance from the center to some point, to some point A. And that will be given in the problem. It's going to tell you the torque at a distance of, I don't know, whatever R is. And it doesn't have to be the same as R max. R max is the distance from the center of the cross-section of the rod to the edge. And your R max comes into play down here when you're determining what the constant is. This constant is equal to the maximum amount of stress applied divided by the max radius. And so you can see R is the distance from the center to A. There's R right here. When R max equals, when R equals R max, all that's going to happen is your R max is going to cancel out with one of the R's here and you just have R to the third. And for the hollow rod, it looks something like this. You have your, it's basically the cross-section is a donut shape. So instead of a solid rod here, it's going to be a donut. It's going to be hollow in the middle. And our equation for a hollow rod is the torque equals some constant times pi over 2 times the R2, which is the outer radius squared, or excuse me, to the fourth, minus R1, which is the inner radius to the fourth. And so R1 is inner radius, R2 is the outer radius. And now I'm going to develop, I'm going to develop these equations from some of the fundamental ideas of stress and strain, as well as, as well as the idea of moments. And it's the strain, and it's represented by this angle, lambda. And so we have our rod in our neutral position, and in this point of the cross-section is at A. And then after we apply a torque, it deforms the slightest amount to A prime. And so we work with this diagram to develop a relationship between, we use this arc length S to equal the length of the rod times this small angle here. And this is true only when you have a very small angle. And when you're using the small angle 
approximation. I should I shouldn't say equals n. This is approximately equal to the length times length times the angle. And you want to use radians when you're doing that. And also by definition of arc length, our arc length s equals the radius times the angle theta. And so we have um, we know from we know from previous sections that our um, that our shearing stress is going to equal the shear modulus times uh, times the strain. Again, the strain is that uh, is represented by this angle lambda. And so we have our designation R, which is the distance from the center to A, wherever you want to put A here. That's going to be R. And our R max is going to be the radius of the rod. So um, whatever that is. And the angle theta is the angle of twist. That's what we're going to call this right here. And so, so by, by setting S equal to the length times the strain and setting S equal to the radius times um, the angle of twist, we, we see that the length of the rod times the strain equals the radius times the angle of twist. And um, we have L is the length of the rod, S is the arc length between A and however far it deformed due to the torque. And so um, to further develop our equation, we're going to let R equal R max. So this radius R is going to equal the length of the rod. R max is the length of the rod. Excuse me, it's not the length of the rod. R max is the radius of the rod. And once we do that, we're going to observe that the strain is the angle of strain is equal to the maximum angle. And what that means is that so when when R equals R max, this angle is as big as it can be. Imagine that if we are choosing a point here as our A prime and a point here as our A, we're, you're going to see that your, your angle here, your strain, is going to be a little bit smaller. As, as R decreases, this angle is going to decrease. So there's going to be less deformation. And so, and the purpose of that is it's a, it's a tool that we're going to use to develop a relationship between the radius and the stress. And, um, and so we'll see, we see now by, by uh, developing this equation here, we're, after we let R equal R max, we're going to see that our, our, our strain is going to be at a max. And we're going to bring the L over. So we're going to have our, our maximum strain equals our maximum radius times our angle of twist divided by the length of the rod. And we're also going to see that our angle theta is always equal to the length of the rod times our strain divided by our radius. And, um, and this radius R is, again, it's, it's going to be the distance from uh, from from the center to wherever wherever uh, our point A is, and this angle uh, the angle of twist is going to stay the same no matter what this R is, whether R is 0 0.0001 here or whether it's equal to R max. This angle theta is going to be the same. So that's why we can say that the theta is equal to the length of the rod times the strain divided by divided by our distance r.